I wanted to do a sharpening. I really wanted to take the edge off to start fresh, fresh steel. Knife was still able to cut magazine paper a little bit when I started, so I decided to draw it straight into the side of the stone and really make the point. The knife is made by Global, and the steel is Chromova 18. Um, so Chromova 18, you're talking 0.55 carbon, uh, around 13-14% chromium, and then trace amount, uh, amounts of other things like vanadium and moly, probably mainly for grain refinement. So the stones that I'm using here are Japanese water stones, alumina based. Um, what I'm starting off with is a, a 250 grit king. Well, I, I almost started off with a 1000 grit king, but decided to back up and, and move to a 250 grit king just for, for apex formation and bevel formation. Um, really set things up. The 250 grit king is it's an extremely aggressive stone, and I use it for that. I mean, I, I really utilize that strength in the stone. I'm not being overly concerned with uh, perfect angles in this sharpening. The angles are fairly consistent and that's obvious at the end, but moving through it, this is really more about function. This is a knife that I use almost every day in the kitchen and really that's, that's what I'm doing here is, is bringing this knife back to being extremely functional. What I'm doing here is checking the edge for burr formation and apex formation just to kind of see where I'm at coming off of that 250 grit king before I move on to the uh, 1000 grit uh, king water stone. I really went into this sharpening fast. I didn't even bother to true the water stones before starting. Um, I just kind of went in, you know, feet first. I hear about sharpeners taking time to set up their sharpening stations and get the perfect products and get the perfect straps and keep everything super clean and all these things that they're doing outside of sharpening. And I'm not saying that, that you shouldn't take care of your stones or keep your workstation as clean as you want it to be or things of that nature, but you need to you need you need to sharpen you need to get dirt under your fingernails doing it all the pretty products and, and clean workstation in the world doesn't mean anything if you're not actually doing what it is you're setting up to do moving on to the 6000 grit kingstone here uh, kingstones aren't the best stones in the world but I don't mind them especially if it's a steel that's as easy going as something like chromova 18 and I'm really just going through the motions, enjoying the, the, the sharpening more than anything else. This next stone is an Arkansas water stone. Somebody got the idea of taking Arkansas stones and grinding them up, putting them in a binder and forming stones out of them. I was talking to a fellow who owns an online store called bestsharpeningstones.com. I had called him about some compounds because of a deal that he had on hand American uh, compounds. And we ended up talking about stones, and he asked me if I had heard of Arkansas water stones, and I said no. So he told me about them, and he said, why don't I send you one, you can use it, see what you think of it. So I said okay. Had him send me the 8,000 grit stone, which was the highest grit that he had. And I enjoy the stone very much. It, it handles itself very well during sharpening. The stone that I'm moving on to here is a 10,000 grit Suhiro. Uh, what I'm using on the stone is a small DMT stone, it's a coarse diamond, and I'm using it to clean off the surface of the Suhiro 
from loading that that was left from the last sharpening that I did. I do this pretty much whenever I use uh, Securus or Shaptons because I don't leave them muddy and I don't really use them muddy. I use them clean and they load, so I clean it off using diamond stones. Normally, I would use a progression of diamond stones, so I might start with coarse and then move on to a medium and then depending upon the grit of the stone that I was cleaning off, finish with a fine or an extra extra fine. But in this case, I'm just kind of blowing through the sharpening, so I left it at a coarse finish. The way that I'm using this small stone here is extremely awkward. I don't believe I've ever used these small stones this way, and I wasn't planning on it, but in the moment, in the sharpening, I just decided to go ahead and hold the stone that way, probably based off of what was going on with my right hand as opposed to my left. But it's 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 not a way that I, I mean, it was more experimentation than anything else, and I just kind of decided to run with it. The stone that I'm about to move on to is a 20,000 grit Suhiro. Again, I'm just cleaning the surface of the stone off. Uh, I wasn't really concerned with having a perfect mirror polish on this edge, so keeping the stones perfectly trued and perfectly clean really wasn't my concern. I just needed them clean enough that they would cut well on the steel. If you notice my movements on the stone, I'm moving from one part of the stone to the next in the sharpening. And the reason for that is because I use the stones uh, without buildup on them, without, without mud or slurry, uh, they load. So I move around uh, on the stone with where I'm connecting with the stone with the knife uh, so that I'm hitting fresh stone as I move through. At some point the stone gets loaded enough that I just kind of start going on it and I don't worry about it. It's, it's more or less all loaded on the surface and then you can still use it, it still cuts, it just slows down the, uh, the rate that the stone cuts the steel. Again, what I'm doing here, feeling the edge, thumbing at it, uh, dragging my fingers over it, is I'm feeling for burr, burr formation and apex formation. With this 20K Suhiro, I'm finalizing the edge, uh, at least preparing it for straps. So I want to make sure that I've got it in the right position to move on to the straps. The strop I'm starting with is a 4 micron strop. More about cleaning up the edge than anything else. Um, 4 micron strop is very aggressive and, and I'm using it to remove any burr that's there to set myself up for uh, the strops that follow. The next drop was a one micron strop, which really puts the edge on. Um, 
one micron strap is probably the most important. I mean, one micron is probably the most important compound to have on a strap. Um, strange doing filming like this all in one shot. Uh, I have to manipulate the lighting in the room for it to show upright. And I find myself moving into weird positions and, and turning to be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, having the lights dim, not having proper lighting for the sharpening makes the whole thing pretty interesting. A significant amount of the sharpening, I was kind of feeling my way through it. The final strop that I'm using is a half micron diamond strop. Um, just to take it a little bit farther than one micron, uh, just because of the speed at which I was moving through this sharpening, uh, the edge refinement was challenged, so I wanted to take it a little bit farther than one micron. Making sure a compound was cleaned off the edge is important, and getting this final shot is always a difficult thing to do, especially with a, a full run video like this where there's no, there's no uh, stopping with the camera. The edge did come up hair whittling sharp. The consistency was fine. Um, I'm okay with the aggression on the edge. It's a very high polish. Um, it's not aggressive like a high carbide steel, but I think it's fine. It'll do fine for the kitchen until the next time I want to sharpen it. So I was happy with the way that the whole thing turned out.